Welcome back. We are now moving on to Chapter 3, Misconduct by Notaries Public or Others Relating to Notarial Acts, and this will be Parts A, B, and C. The expectations for this webinar, Misconduct by Notaries Public or Other Relating to Notarial Acts, will cover Part A, which is Conflict of Interest, including Financial Transactions, Real Property, No Conflict of Interest, Part B, giving legal advice or practicing law, and Part C, reasons for commission revocation or suspensions or application denial. Please remember to record your start time for this module on your timesheet provided in your workbook. Misconduct by notaries public or others in connection with notarial acts may be addressed through criminal, civil, or administrative laws and proceedings. Criminal misconduct may be a felony, misdemeanor, or infraction. A felony is punishable by a term in state prison or county jail. A fine may also be imposed in addition to any imprisonment. A misdemeanor is punishable by a term in jail, probation, a fine, or all three. An infraction is punishable by a fine. Criminal misconduct may result in the revocation, suspension, or denial of a notary public's commission or application. Civil misconduct subjects a notary public to fines and may also lead to suspension or revocation of the notary public's commission or denial of a notary public application by the California Secretary of State. Also, a notary public and the sureties on the notary public's official bond are liable in a civil action for all the damages sustained from a notary public's misconduct. Administrative action can be taken against a notary public or notary public application to suspend or revoke a notary public commission or deny a notary application for failing to discharge the duties and responsibilities required of a notary public. Conflict of interest. A notary public who has a direct financial or beneficial interest in a transaction cannot perform any notarial act in connection with that transaction. Your best practice tip is since California is a community property state, it is important for a notary public to exercise great care when performing notarial services for a spouse or domestic partner in order to avoid potential conflicts of interest. If a notary public is named individually as a principal in a financial transaction, the notary public has a direct financial or beneficial interest in the transaction and a conflict of interest and cannot perform any notarial acts in connection with that transaction. For example, if the notary public is named as a party in a contract or is assigned the proceeds of a sale, the notary public has a direct financial conflict of interest and must not perform any notarial acts in connection with that transaction. Real property. In the area of real property, a notary public has a conflict of interest if the notary public is a grantor, grantee, mortgagor, mortgagee, trustor or trustee, beneficiary, a vendor, a vendee, lessor or lessee in the transaction. For example, if a notary public is a grantee of a deed of sale for a house or is assigned rents, or is paying off a home mortgage, the notary public is prohibited from performing any notarial act in connection with that transaction. No conflict of interest. If acting for someone else, if a notary public acts as an agent, employee, insurer, attorney, assuming the notary public is admitted to practice law in California, escrow or lender or another person who has a direct financial or beneficial interest 
in a transaction, then the notary public does not have a prohibited direct financial or beneficial interest. In other words, a notary public acting as an agent for another person can perform notarial services. Or, if a notary public for a company that will receive benefits or money from a transaction, the notary public can perform notarial services in connection with that transaction. The notary public is not benefiting directly, even if the notary public's employer receives a benefit. Giving legal advice or practicing law. A notary public is prohibited from practicing law unless the notary public is also a licensed California attorney. Since a notary public comes into contact with a large number of legal documents from deeds to wills to contracts, among many others, there may be a temptation to offer advice or comment on legal aspects of the document instead of carrying out the notarial's activities alone. But it is very important to remember that a notary public cannot undertake any acts that constitute the practice of the law. Among the acts that constitute the practice of the law are the preparation, drafting, or selection of legal documents or giving advice with relation to any legal document or legal matter. For example, if a customer brings a document to a notary public without a notarial certificate and asks the notary public to notarize it, the notary public cannot provide advice or decide for the customer whether a certificate of acknowledgement should be completed or whether a jurat would be in order. The customer must decide. Your best practice tip if the customer is unsure, the notary public should recommend that the customer confer with the party receiving the document or that the customer consult with an attorney. Reasons for Commission Revocation or Suspension or Application Denial Notary public applicants must disclose on their application all arrests for which trials are pending and all convictions. The California Secretary of State can deny an application for failing to disclose any convictions, either felonies or misdemeanors, including convictions dismissed under the California Penal Code sections 1203.4 or 1203.4a. If the California Secretary of State either denies an application or proceeds to revoke or suspend the commission of a notary public, the person affected has a right to a hearing on the matter. However, there are two exceptions. The first exception occurs when this California Secretary of State has already denied an application or revoked or suspended a commission in a proceeding within the previous year. The second exception is if a notary public's commission has already expired and after a proceeding in which the person had an opportunity for a hearing, 
the California Secretary of State makes an order that they were or were not grounds for revoking or suspending the California Notary Public's commission or for misconduct. Even if a notary public's commission has expired or the notary public has resigned, if the notary public has committed acts that could be grounds for suspension or revocation of the commission, the California Secretary of State can still go ahead with an investigation or disciplinary action following the expiration or resignation of a commission. The reasons the California Secretary of State may refuse to appoint someone to act as a notary public or revoke or suspend the notary public's commission are found in the California Government Code Section 8214.1. They are substantial material misstatement or omission in the application submitted to the California Secretary of State to become a notary public. Conviction of a felony, a lesser offense involving moral turpitude, or a lesser offense of a nature incompatible with the duties of a notary public. A conviction after a plea of nolo contendere is deemed to be a conviction. Revocation, suspension, restriction, or denial a professional license. If the revocation, suspension, restriction, or denial was for misconduct based on dishonesty or for any cause substantially relating to the duties or responsibilities of a notary public. Failure to discharge fully and faithfully any of the duties or responsibilities required of a notary public.
When adjudicated liable for damages in any suit grounded in fraud, misrepresentation, or for a violation of the state regulatory laws, or in any suit based upon a failure to discharge fully and faithfully the duties as a notary public, the use of false or misleading advertising wherein the notary public has represented that the notary public has duties, rights, or privileges that he or she does not possess by law, the practice of law in violation of the California Business and Professional Code Section 6125, charging more than the allowable maximum statutory fees, commission of any act involving dishonesty, fraud, or deceit with the intent to substantially benefit the notary public or another or substantially injure another. Failure to complete the acknowledgement at the time the notary public signature and seal are affixed to the document and failure to administer the oath or affirmation as required by the California Government Code Section 8205, 
execution of any certificate as a notary public containing a statement known to the notary public to be false. Violation of Government Code Section 8223. This section of the California Government Code primarily makes it illegal for someone holding himself or herself out as an immigration specialist or immigration consultant to advertise in any way that he or she is a notary public. Failure to submit any remittance payable upon demand by the California Secretary of State or failure to satisfy any court-ordered money judgment including restitution. Failure to secure the sequential journal of official acts pursuant to the California Government Code Section 8206 or the official seal pursuant to the California Code Section 8207 or willful failure to report the theft or loss of the sequential journal pursuant to the California Government Code Section 8206B. Translating notary public into Spanish or advertising in a language other than English in violation of California Government Code Section 8219.5, Commission of an Act in violation of California Government Code Section 6203, Delivery of a Certificate Known to be False, 8214.2, Willful Fraud in Connection with the Deed of Trust, 8225, soliciting as notary public to perform a known improper notorial act, or 8227.3, non-notary placing encumbrance on real property, single family residence. Of California Penal Code Sections 115, knowingly filing false or forged document placing an encumbrance on single family residence, 470 forgery or 487 grand theft, 487A grand theft of specified animals or the carcass or portion of a carcass of any such animal, or 530.5, willfully obtaining personal information of another for criminal purposes and willful failure to provide access to the sequential journal of official notatorial acts upon request by a peace officer. That completes Chapter 3, ABC. We are now going to move on to Chapter 3, Parts D through G, which is the final segment. Please do not forget to record your end time for this module on your timesheet provided in your workbook. Chapter 3 will discuss in further detail the misconduct of notaries public or other relating to notorials acts, including civil penalties, felonies or possible felonies, misdemeanors or possible misdemeanors, infractions by notaries public.